<laughs> Alright, do we dare? Yeah, do it. Alright, three. One, two, three. First of all, so how do we relate these two, right? Yeah. So the, the way I kind of do this is I kind of explain the fulcrums, right? Yeah. You got your back, middle, front fulcrum. Yeah. You know, when you're in the front, you're kind of open, mid, you kind of close it more, and back, you're kind of holding on yeah. a little bit, right? Never too tight or whatever. Yeah. So when kids are learning traditional, like, how is it different? It's, I try to get them to think in the same way. So <clears throat> back fulcrum just means that, you know, these back fingers are, are supporting or in control. So these back fingers are in control touching the stick. Mm. So then when I move to my mid, when I open up back here, that means I'm going to open up right here just a little bit. Larger, You're about here, right? Between my ring finger and my stick, I open up like an atom. But a single atom is so small, it is impossible to see with the naked eye. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I never really want to pull my fingers away. And yeah. You're going to see me do that and him do that because we're old. <laughs> Um, and and then when I go my front fulcrum, then I open up two atoms. So it's, yeah. you've got to have some breathing room, right? <laughs> I, usually say, I usually say baby uh, squirrel hair. Baby, squ I usually baby say, squirrel I usually hair. I usually say uh, albino ant hair. <laughs> that usually gets a reaction. So, so not very much is the, is the point. So I relate the two. So the more I'm in control, the more I'm in control my, to my stick and ring finger, the more I open up, the more I start to open up just a little bit. Everything's more micro. In the left, yeah. Whatever I'm doing here, if I'm if I'm open back here, that means I'm open just a little bit here. So and try and yeah. we'll, we'll model good uh, practice no, behavior. No, for students is, so this is I'll put it on one twenty. All right, let's just start. Since we are just open here, we're just gonna be a little bit little bit of breathing room in our ring finger and try to let the stick bounce. Although there's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of wrist. Trying to be relaxed. Let's back this time just a little bit. Okay, okay, players who are playing. 16 minutes, so 116, just a little bit. So even now, I'm trying to get the rebound going, even though this uh, technically at this tempo, you would be, be like more back more. fulcrum. I'm, I'm trying to work on. Wow, we can stay the measure now. All right, ready? Yeah. One, two, ready. Uh, so you really have to stay relaxed. Yeah. And you have to learn how to not over grip. This might be this might be tough even just to start out with. Yeah. So let me let me just kind of like highlight what just happened, which is if it's just eighth notes at 116, you may be tempted to place the notes a little bit more deliberately to get For that sound quality. Sound quality. Yeah. But if you're having to hop back and forth between a, a quick burst of sixteenths, yeah. you really have to maintain that flow. Yeah, it's good that you said that, because I mean when you're a line player, usually I call you know, that's our bread and butter is the inner beats, like yep. sound quality. Yeah. Downloads that, yeah, yeah, tippy tippy, right. and and you're going to be rushing and because yeah. you're in the wrong fulcrum. We're exploring the twitch, yes. so that's very much more less control. So it, just know we're exploring that, that, and that's not necessarily what you would do in the show. Yeah. Um, so anyway, and if this is too fast, go slower. Right. You're looking for a tempo that you're you're right up against that feels a little uncomfortable for you to go. Yeah. You want to find that sweet spot where you can kind of do it. And kind of not do it. Yeah. That way you're you're bridging that gap. Yeah. And then, you know you push that up. And so some of this, even before you're ready to do this, you might want to do this like just thumb and learn how to use your fingers. Because if you don't know how to use your thumb, or you try it first. That's easier for me. Yeah. Yeah. You've got that some finger on top. That's way easier for me. And a lot of people. Don't like to use the middle finger. I even use my middle finger all the time. So you do your middle finger. So this might be something you might want to try first. Or again, Adam, thumb and first together, and then get these out of the way. But anyway, then you can eventually get to a technique, right? So let's let's get back to it. So some of you might be might be having a hard time with this because you haven't developed your awareness of your how your fingers work and how to get out of the way in your ring and pinky. Alright, let's go to two. Oh boy. Get out of the way. Old man hands. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Breathe. Cross your shoulders. Alright, do we dare? Yeah, I did. Alright, three. One, two, three. I got like four more reps of me. I'm dying. 
<laughs> so this tempo might be a little too fast. For keep old going, man. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, keep going. Yeah, this is not working the right muscles for me. Yeah. yeah. So this is real life though, and I'm glad that we're like crumbling as we're doing this because as you're practicing this, you can see that your your ability to stay relaxed starts to yeah, degrade. Yeah, to tense time. up here. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would, if I were doing this again, I would probably take it down. Yeah. And you quite know, a bit. I think maybe. I mean, if you're thinking. And then I would start getting back to the drawing board with my fingers too. Yeah. My fingers are not. Yeah. In shape right now. So. But those are some of the things I think of, and then you could branch that out and start with the tr with the triplets and the eight and the sixteenth notes. You yeah. could, you know. Yeah, I think that'll be the next step because a lot of my I have a lot of um, again things I've taken from Bill Bachman where he's talking about all the. the can I just, sorry, sure. can I say that? I'm like such a huge Bill Bachman fan. Like I've watched Bill's videos over the years, and I've just so recently great. started talking to him online. Yeah. And uh, I know that he came out for one of your day of percussions. Yeah, so you, I, I he worked like with a, me in Alvin yeah. one year, and then this past year we had like a, uh, we call it a, a Rock of Ages, and we did like some rocks, yeah, and drums, and of course he played. But I just want to say like you know Bill's instructional video material online drumworkout.com. If yeah. you haven't watched his videos, his explanation, he's like his his sense of humor. I'm sure is part of what he's got a great <laughs> sense of humor. I think, but the way he explains things is just it's so. Simple, yeah, yet right on it's point. It's very, you know, it's not complicated, but it's it's simple. Yet he gets so many different ideas in your head. He keeps he makes it so such an art. Yeah, but um, yeah, and you know he's got his 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 drums. He makes drums. Yeah, I saw those BB online, drums. So I great. bought one for Christmas. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I've got this awesome uh, BB drum, and they actually he uh, donated one of his drums to my school. Wow. Yeah, it was so, funny because I'm really into Twenty One Pilots, so I got. I got uh, like the 21 Pilots drumsticks and they're red. Yeah. Just one of my students gave them to me and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I, I started playing with them and I wanted to get another one because was, it was chipping away. So I mean, the red was chipping off. And it was, the there was red on the head. On the head. I'm like, because I'm, I jumped on his kit real quick just because I wanted to. Yeah. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it because in the back of his head, he's like, well, that's your drum now. You can screw it up all you want. <laughs> So anyway, BB drums, I mean, just yeah. high quality well, stuff. there's some links down in the description below. Yeah. So, Can I say something about this, uh, that, what was happening earlier, just real quick before we put it yep. together? Mm -hmm. Which is, what you're looking for and what you might be feeling, and this is what I was feeling earlier, was, you're, and especially in your left hand, you're going to want to resort to this arm pumping thing, right? And you're going to feel your whole arm moving or ten tension in your, your shoulder, your deltoid, or your bicep here. And the key is to, to go back and reference what was it when it felt relaxed and easy. You're sampling that feeling and you're trying to recreate that feeling uh, as you're playing. Well, yeah, that's partly why we have that check in between is to relax. We were talking about Bill Bakken, right? So he's got these 12 muscles yeah. that you need to master so you can play anything under the sun. Wow. Right? So I kind of, uh, I turned that into like 13 and I use it for my drum line editions and my beginner stuff so they, they know what to expect. So that a lot of it starts with, you know, one hand where you can mm -hmm. get the, you can focus on each hand. But I think, yeah, you can play eights all day. But if you don't know how to apply it, put it together. Yeah. So a lot of my exercises will go right, left, and then the next exercise will be, okay, now let's put those hands together. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, you want to develop each and, and explore each hand, but you gotta learn how to, that's a whole nother thing, is putting them together. It seems yeah. so simple, yep. but learning how to take those exercises, you know. Yeah. One hand, a two, and three, right? Now we're going 30 second notes into 60 notes. Is this too fast for us? No. Well, we got it. Alright, two beats. Three. There we go. Okay, you know what? This is a good you, you got it. <laughs> so this is a good thing. So like I was gonna show you an exercise later to I really love that I I feel like it's an exercise that made me make drum core. Whoa. I got it from my instructor um, in high school. I'll explain it later. Yeah, and I think, gold coming up here. Yeah, so um, I think part of that, you saw me falling apart. I think that's part of it. Um, play 
Even when you're sucking, you know, if you yeah. just go, all right, all right, it's really falling apart. Just keep going. Yes, you have to keep going. A lot of people, they do that, and they go, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. And then they just so, stop. So the way I think about it is like, if you're working out, yeah. if you're trying to lift some weight, if you yeah. just go, I can't do it. <laughs> Right, and you're gonna have you're gonna have a little bit of that jiggly. Yeah. Right, and then the next day has a little bit less. Yeah. The next day, you, then you kind of got. It. If you haven't gotten to the point where like the bar is on your chest and you can't get it off, and you've got your spotter there to help you get it off, if you haven't experienced the feeling, yeah. then you're not maybe you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And some of that could be bad technique, but some of it because you just you're just developing those muscles and yeah. you're gonna it's gonna be again it's gonna be ugly or worse before it gets better, but. Um, so, do you want to do this rubber band thing? I do. Uh, I just want to clarify something I said because I can hear how it's getting misinterpreted in some students' heads right now, which is you're not supposed to be playing like this, but if you're in this experimentation, exploration, but pushing up against your weakness phase, that's when you might experience that that struggle. So, okay, you got some rubber bands and well, rubber bands I was, the other I don't know. This, you're going to edit this. Yeah. Um, there's something I started messing with last year because. This is great using gravity, yeah. but it's kind of weird for some students, like because it's not here. So I, I had I had an idea. I don't know how I pulled this off. Let's try it. Show okay. me. I think I did something where I I had it around my wrist. Okay. And then I twisted it. And I put my stick through it. What did I, what did I do? Yeah, there it is. So I did something like that where it created resistance. You see how the stick is? <laughs> At least if I could recreate what you just did. And guys, this is the kind of teacher that Dre is too. He's experimenting. He's trying new things. I well, I used to have some it. students with some disabilities, and and you have to try different things. So with this, so I, what I like about this again, it it's opening up your hand, and this might be stupid. I don't. know. It's opening up your hand without you having to. Um, you know, if I didn't have a rubber band, I would have to do something weird to get my stick to be open. But this kind of recreates the gravity. And so this is another thing where I tried this with my, I experimented with my Garcia beginners. Like, okay, let's just work out our pinky without touching. I have never seen this before. You invented this, right? Well, last year. So. Yeah. Okay, so if you see this anywhere else... We're I'm sure it's been done. I'm sure it's been done. All right, so I'm like working on my pinky for a while. And again, I'm not touching my palm. I might do this for like 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, and then I'm going to work out my ring finger or like all of them together. So this is another way where you can, you know, you can actually do this in oh, a yeah. playing position. This is crazy. Actually, you know, as someone who's trying this for the first time, it's amazing how much this replicates this feeling. The moment of changing direction, yeah. Without, without. So it's like that. freeze framing. Yeah, what you would do in a normal stroke. Anyway, it's it's a little the only, clunky. Yeah, whatever. the only thing is like it's pulling down. It's pulling down a little bit. Yeah, but I, I think the idea. is Well, there. maybe what did I do? Did I bring it down here? I don't remember what I did. So I think you could bring it down. Yeah, that works. It bring it's a little less tension, but you can bring it down too. That works. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah. But again, this is good because you can do it in position. Yeah. So you don't have to do it like this way. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And you can. That's how encouraging he is. To his students back home as well. Yeah. So. See, yeah. yeah. So. Um, you know, another thing that uh, I always tell my students, because it's just developing muscles, right? So when I marched Phantom in 98, I marched snare line, uh, the center tenor, man, I don't remember, it's all about the nicknames. I don't remember his real name, but his, his nickname, nickname was Vegas. Yeah. Comment below if you know the real name. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. It was long, I was, that was the longest summer of my yeah. life. Yeah. Um, he... He would always hold the stick. I call this raptor grip. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your middle finger first. And you're just holding on with your ring and your pinky. And he would he would be loose enough for it to move and kind of bounce, you know, down into his uh, webbing between your thumb and first. And he would do this, like, after shows. If you were talking, and tenor mallets too, right? Yeah. He would be talking with people or eating fourth meal. Yeah. You know? And just, he'd be doing this all the time. Yeah. And, and it's working these uh, resistance Back muscles yeah. in your pinky and ring. And that, you know, you, I mean, I show my kids this, try that with just your pinky. Mm. Just hold with your, just oh, yeah. with your pinky. Yeah. And like, you can do it, but your students are going to be like, oh God, right? Yeah. And so you're developing all the, even just hold it with your ring finger. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn how to be pliable enough for it to bounce. Yeah. But, I mean, Vegas would do this all the time. He had crazy singles. Yeah. And so this is another way you can develop those muscles. You know, just shake it. It's like shake. Did you do this one? Yeah. Uh -huh. My, my I, high school teacher would. This one, I, I, this is good because, like, I, I use that for, like, when, when you push-pull. Yeah. And you do a roll. Shh. Yeah, and hear the sound quality, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of kids are blown away with that, you know. And then you say, say dude, oh, my God. 
do this on a pillow or do this on your leg. Yeah. And they, it blows their mind because they don't know how to push pull. Right. Yeah. So I use that for push pull. Yeah. I, I don't like it for this because you're kind of cranking your you're, fingers. You're kind of sometimes you can push your fingers in yeah. to your you know your I mean, arm, this, this and then way. it kind of defeats the purpose of you don't want to hit your palm. It's hitting something. Yeah. I don't want to hit anything. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. so I use it for a different skill. Yeah. But I cool. yeah totally would do that. Yeah. One thing I would add to this is that you know Dre's showing all these like hacks or like ways that you can isolate these muscle groups, but something that you said earlier that's super important is that you're always taking it back to the drum and putting it in, into context, right? Yeah. You're applying it in some, some fashion where you find something that you're playing in the music to see if the skills that you're working with is showing up. Yeah. Is there something that you would do after? Um, well, to work on the burst, of the, the thing that comes to mind, I think there's a couple different versions of this, but Pantera. You ever heard of yeah. Pantera? Yeah. So Pantera, I think, is a good one because you, you're kind of working that same muscle, but it's more. Uh, it has more of a phrasing to it. Yeah. Um, maybe we can link the Try music. Oh, do it again. And it kind of has this phrase. Ready? Go. Ready? You ready? Ready? <laughs> ready? Go. Earth at the earth at the earth 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 at the earth at the earth 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 the earth the earth earth the earth the earth 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 the earth 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 that one's good because it's kind of the same muscles and the kind of the same burst. Yeah. And you have to get out of the way. And like, I mean, Plug would do this. Oh man. That's crazy. Right? Anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's try it again. I, I sure. I'm gonna suck. Bad. Not bad. So, so even the shot, I don't want to. I don't want my stick. I don't want my, the back of my stick to hit my palm. Even on, I, I found myself going nope, nope. Even though I did pretty good on that, when I felt the stick hitting my palm, yeah. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to be free flowing the whole time, but yet in control. So, well, maybe we can link a PDF to that exercise. Yeah. That's an old school exercise. Yeah. Um, but that one, I think, would unleash the beast. As I get the thing about this is like that was an exercise for me where you've got a thing that is practicing the, the skill set that you're working on mm -hmm. and then like you're sharpening that tool, right? Mm -hmm. So you have an exercise that you can continually push the boundaries of how fast can I play it. And you get to the point where like let's say you can play it at, I'm just making up a number here, 180 or 200. Now you're never going to have to worry about that skill set anymore because you know you've You've done that exercise, like it allows you to play here just alternating here just quickly. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see that in the music now, you're not gonna have to go like, oh, can I play that? You, you already know that you can do it because you've, you've worked it before. And I think we gotta be careful also, as we started been, as, as we started playing that, our heights started creeping up. Yeah. I'm really isolating the low, and yeah. we should really keep it at a tempo and yeah. we'll really work on the low stuff. And that's hard. One, yeah. of my, one of the things that kind of blew my mind, and I'll say, it, I tell my students this, one of my, I don't know, some, I've had many teachers, great teachers over the years, but they will ask, have you just spent a whole day just playing three inches? And the answer is always no. Yep. But then, like, you're not good at playing three inches and with that kind of muscle or what, what have you because you don't practice that level all the yeah. time, you know? So, I have a horror story about that, okay. which is at one of the callback camps for the, the first my audition at Phantom. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you went in, we had individual auditions, not just the first camp, but every camp, everyone would get called in one at a time. Well, just play okay. through stuff, right? And I remember the tech saying, okay, just play three inch eights as fast as you can. Okay, so I'm like a younger 18, 19 year old kid, right? And you don't think before you act. What do I do? I take my six out and I just start to play eights. I do literally what he says is play eights at three inches as fast as I can. Okay. What you should have done is ideally you already know what your top tempo is that you can do it without folding and play that tempo, right? So what do I do? I start, I just go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, man? Right? And so that was a lesson for me that I needed to go back home and, and, and do my homework and know that that's about what it's going to be with that looking 
and, and, and folding in front of somebody. So knowing your thresholds is a big part of it too. Are there other? Right. Are there? I have. Uh, there are other. I mean, that's strategies for. for I mean, Michael Baines, Lauren Pantera. That'll help <laughs> at a low level. But also yeah. some of the stuff we're doing. It's like a recurring theme for me, which is a lot of young players, they'll see a video of something doing something that's like impressive, and they go, oh, I want to do that. And then you just play that thing at that tempo, right? So for example, you see someone going, like, I want to do that. But you just realize that that player didn't get there by just doing that. They went through these baby steps and be going. So... Maybe the first step is have a target of what you want to achieve, but then you need to stair step it back yourself and scaffold your own. Well, and I also think getting ready for an audition or um, you have to be aware of how to develop your muscles over time. So like I always felt like when I was getting ready for Phantom, like I was really serious. I had an off period, I practiced in front of a window where I could see my technique and uh, I, I had to practice every day because I knew myself as a player. If I took a day off, the next day when I played, yeah. it felt like I took two days off. Mm. And so yeah. I remember, you know, I used to work for kind of a catering company in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I would serve sodas or whatever. And I didn't get to practice that night because the party goes till 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. And I had an audition coming up. And I was like, I didn't get to practice today. I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, I took my pad and my sticks and I went to the garage. And I did, got my hour in until 3 a.m. Yep. And like I was really serious about it. So I, again, taking a day off kind of ruins everything. Yeah. Or even two or three days. You have to be consistent. Yeah. So you have to be disciplined enough to do these exercises, give them the, the time and the love they need. Yeah. You know. To develop. Uh, yeah. It's not just. I mean, that's one of the things I tell my students. That's what I love about, especially percussion. Is there's no shortcuts in the world where everything's faster and we have technology and stuff. Band, especially for sixth graders, I tell their parents. Is the one thing where, what's well, not the one thing, but it's one of the the arts where there's no shortcuts. Yeah, you have to put in the time and learn how to put in the grunt work, and and that's going to translate to your work wherever you do. You learn, you've learned how to work hard and and fail, you know, and uh, learn to see the the long road, you know, and yeah. see how it benefits, you know, yeah. over time. So there, there's no replacing good practice, and you. It's hard to take days off when you're trying to build, build something. Yeah. So, um, so this exercise that I wanted to show you, yeah, um, was from it was from like a Phantom Regiment audition packet from the '80s. Okay. Um, I, I love like you know reviving these. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I, when, I, when we were watching the early thousands, I remember thinking like early '90s, '80s being like. Old, old school. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure people who are watching these videos now think that we're dinosaurs who yeah, we marched in the we 2000s. Are. Well, so some of us learned something in the 80s. That I mean, must some of things are, all these lines are so good now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, it's uh, I, could I couldn't have done that when I was that age. Anyway, but there's still some, we still got some value, right? <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, this is like. So, great transition. <laughs> Sorry, I destroyed your flow there. <laughs>